New York, Boston, Washington, Miami. Entire cities have been destroyed. The number of casualties is really hard to get at in something like this. Uh, for the 25 meter scenario with maybe three to four hours warning, we came up with roughly four and a half million casualties. It's possible that millions of dead would be left to decay where they died. And that brings with it yet another threat. It would be a horrific mix of debris and unfortunately human remains, animal remains. So you can imagine after a few hours, you, you would have a biological nightmare. Lack of shelter, food, water, and diseases like dysentery all become killers. We have identified 500 different locations that we could activate as emergency shelters. Those are primarily public schools and some of our city university buildings and facilities. The capacity of the system is 600,000 people. Um, we don't look forward to a, a job where we would have to uh, shelter 600,000 people, but that is the, the um, capacity of the system today. It's simply impossible to plan for such a scale of disaster. All these provisions will feed only 70,000 people for seven days. Just a tiny fraction of the possible numbers of displaced survivors in Manhattan alone. Our mega tsunami has triggered not only death and destruction in the American East, but a humanitarian crisis that could affect the entire nation. Think of losing every single East Coast shipping port. That's essentially what we're talking about with a mega tsunami. If you lose those ports, you have a huge problem, believe it or not, into the Midwest of the US, all the way to the Mississippi River, because a lot of that infrastructure, those rail hubs come right to the coast. So even if people that weren't directly impacted by the tsunami itself, they wouldn't have food coming to their supermarkets. Far inland, many hundreds of miles from the direct effects of the mega tsunami, there could be mass food shortages. Most cities only have a two or three day supply of food. So you think about cities like Atlanta, you think about Memphis, you think about those inland areas that get a lot of their material coming from ports on the East Coast, and that's suddenly gone for years perhaps to recover. That's a, an enormous problem. And ultimately, the scale of disaster won't just be measured in lives lost. No one can be sure, but a mega tsunami could deliver a financial shock so great that its impact could change the global economy, politics, and the balance of east-west power, perhaps forever. You think about how much disruption was caused by September 11, 2001 attacks and how much that disrupted the world economy, well, they were back up and running four days later. Imagine if they weren't able to be back up and running in 40 days or 40 months. It could be that the world's economy would recover as capitalists move electronic money to safer havens. There's some evidence, as was the case with the Kobe earthquake of 1995, that natural disasters can even trigger investment and renewal. But it's hard to imagine the fragile global economy bouncing back from such devastation as this. The truth is, no one really knows. In the long term, we know these ocean island collapses occur. Around the world, there may be one of these enormous events maybe once every 20,000 years, maybe only once every 50,000 years. We can't say 
when the collapse is going to occur. But the problem with the Cumbrigeja is that it seems to already be close to failure. So the crucial question is not a matter of if, but of when.